which is a trotting horse. The problem is when they people buy them, two things. One, obviously, they're hard mouthed. Yep. Normally, it's hard to make a generalisation, but normally they're hard mouthed. Steady, just walk, walk, walk. Good boy. So, what I'm doing when it walk, walk. What I'm doing with this fella is teaching him to walk when he's told, getting his head carriage right, whereas he would go with his nose straight out. I've got some side reins on him with a little bit of elastic just to help me so that I can take my hands off the reins, yeah? But if you look now up the side of him, he's not using his side reins. You can see there he's not, you know, he's not actually using them. And the other thing is he's not used to bridging. So when you go down here, all he wants to kick. You know, he wants to lift his, his quarters and go to kick because he's never had bridging on. But you have to remember these things when you buy these horses. That they might well go in a sulky flat out. Now, when they go in a sulky, they go flat up, but they, they sometimes don't even turn the horses. So what they'll do is stand up between the shelves, you know, just slide off the seat, stand up and lift it round to go around so the horse don't even know how to turn. So it's like re-breaking horse, and it's more involved than that because you've got to get his mouth right, you know? So I'm just saying to him here, steady boy, steady. And I want him to go on a slack rein like that, yeah? But I don't want him, and I'll just show you now, if you look at his legs behind, he'll go into trotting mode ever so quickly, so that's what we're trying to stop him doing. So if you go like that, you see his legs come wider and wider apart behind, but in actual fact, they're not doing it like they were. But you look on some of the other films, hoof by going on the outside of it to get the long stride that's needed for racing. Now the, the cob's coming really nice. He's going to make a nice little driving horse because we've only got him in a piece of rubber. I haven't got a big severe bit in there. I'm putting my money where my mouth is and saying, oh, oh baby, oh. So he's never had that britching before. He don't understand what it is. And he, it, it pulls on him and he'll kick them back. I mean, the kicking and bucking, we hope, is over now. Um, there he is. So he's annoyed by the, by the britching on him. Just walk, just walk, just walk, just walk, just walk. So now we're making him walk, you know, just asking him to walk. I don't want to make him do anything because it's not his fault. He's done the job he was asked to do, which is race. Um, obviously he weren't fast enough or he wouldn't have been sold. So what I'm saying is we're trying to get head carriage on. If you look there now, that rein's doing nothing. The little red rein with the soft elastic on. Steady baby, just walk, just walk, he's a good boy. Well, getting used to the bridge and used to a crouper. Often they'll run them without a crouper as well. Because what they'll have is just a pad on their backs and on a quick edge harness and sometimes won't even have a crouper. So you've got to be very, very careful when you get these ex trotters when you're trying to break them. That's just a bit of advice for what it's worth. They won't have known bridging. Some will have done, obviously you can't generalise, but some of them won't have known a croup and they won't know bridging. Put it on them and you've got a different animal. They'll start running away from it, kicking and bucking. This one was lifting and bucking quite a lot, but we think we've got it out of him now. So, and his head carriage is coming nice. Steady boy, steady. And I've only got him in a piece of rubber. Well, anyone that's seen trotters racing, See the man's hanging on for him for all he's worth, leaning his body weight back on the horse's mouth. So to re-mouth him is not an easy job to do. But we're getting this one nice now. He's just on my hands light. You can see there, he's just walking sweet. You see? Well, if we ask him to trot, trot. And he'll just jig jog like that now. Whereas before he'd be off 90 mile an hour as fast as he could go. So. We're just retraining them and telling them that no, you haven't got to do that anymore. Steady boy, steady my little darling. There's a good boy. And 
try and give him another life. You know, the lady that's going to have him, she's just going to take him and have him go. You know, just take him out as a driving horse. Um, and you can see he's going along here sweet now. Well, he wouldn't have done this before. You know, he'd have been going as fast as he could. Or put it this way, you'd have to let him go for a mile or two flat out before you could do a thing with him. But now we've just come out of our place, we're not half a mile from home yet, and he's behaving himself and going quite sweet. And we give him a new life, you know, where he's not, because he's got no future otherwise. That's what you've got to understand. People don't understand that. This horse has got no future if he's not given one, you know, by retraining him so he can do something else. But he's going there, look, you can see that but now. We're not even half a mile from home yet. We're about three quarters of a mile from home now. And every time we bring him out, he's getting better. So he's going slack on the range now, like most of the horses do. He's not widening out behind, he's not speeding up. He's just going like this, because he's learning this is what I've got to do. But it's not an easy thing, you know. It's, you've got to have a bit of patience with him. There you go, come back. And just walk. Just walk, my darling. There's a good boy. And so he's got a whole new thing. He might well have been all right on the road. They say, oh, he's good on the road. But he was flat out on the road. When he's asked to walk and confront things on the road, he'd be a different... Whoa, steady boy. A different kettle of fish. So we just want to make him nice and simple like this. We're going to go round to the shop and back. And that's just a matter of what we've got to do. But the lady will be pleased with him. And also the other thing is, if you can hold him on a nice piece of rubber, yeah, and you can control him on that, well, surely that must be better for the horse. People say, oh, I couldn't trust, I wouldn't be able to do it in rubber. Well, we do it all the time. And with horses like him that's got hard mouth, that's going to pull your arms out your sockets. But the funny thing is, if you can drive and you're willing to learn and re-school yourself, you'll find you come on that bit of rubber. Look at that head carriage, look. Just nice and sweet. Steady, my baby boy. Remember the bridging? Look at it pushing in his quarters as we come down that slope. Steady, baby. But he's not spiteful anymore. He's not trying to kick it off. His ears are pricked forward, yeah? His towel's lifted off his body. See, when horse kicks, he drop his towel under him. You know, tighten his towel down, clamp it in other words, then he'll kick. Because he don't want his towel in the way of what he's kicking out at. But the pony's just going nice now. He makes a lovely little thing. We've only had him now two weeks. And from going flat out, we've got him just going. And when I asked him to come up now, trot baby, trot. He's going away, no rain on him. He's using that little bit of red side rain very slightly, but it's only, only... Listen to me, a quarter of an inch bungee. You know, it's doubled up because it's a loop. But it's very, very easy going bungee. It's not hard. It's not, you know, it's very, very soft. Any sort of weight will move it, you know. Steady, um, baby. And the other thing now, you see his body rocking. This horse would never have cantered at this speed in his life. You know, trotters don't do that. What trotters will do is they'll break to a canter, but they'll be flat out when they've got no nothing left to give. And they'll break to a canter, and on the racetrack, then they have to pull out, pull over, come right back, and go behind the last horse. Otherwise, they're disqualified. And then they can try again. And that's how it works on a racetrack, as far as I understand it. Certainly in America, that's true. So this horse just going sweet now just lovely. I'm so pleased with him because we've managed to give him another life. What life would he have? If you couldn't hold him, they'd pull your arms out and all he was going was 90 mile an hour and he wouldn't care what was in front of him, he'd go straight over it. You know, he wouldn't have any sense of, here's a junction, I've got to stop. He'd go straight out in the junction. Well, you know, that's highly dangerous. So what we're trying to do is to reschool him, give him an, another life and if the lady that comes, what he's going to do now, which is a lovely idea, absolutely lovely, be with us a month, then he's going to be turned away for the rest of the winter, and in the spring, 
we're going to have him back. Yeah. And do it all again for a couple of weeks, and she's going to come over and drive with us. Yeah. So I know that she's. You know, I don't want her to have to have any strength. You see, like I'm driving him here with a slack rein. I'm just saying to him, steady, look at the rain, steady, there's a good boy, just steady. Come round, Dolly. You know, and you can see there, he's just going to break to a trot, look. Which, you know, is, is unnatural for him to do at this speed, which I'm over the moon with. So if we can get him to, to I'm sorry, break from a trot to a canter, and if we can get him to do that, I'll have people say, oh, you shouldn't canter them on the road. Let me tell you, when you turn all set at 7 o'clock in the morning, when you're on the way to work, you turn him out on rock hard, frozen ground, and don't tell me people don't, I see it all the time. Right, you might not, but plenty of people do. Rock hard, frozen ground, hard as iron, hard as iron. Right, with all the divots in it, and they turn the horse around, the first thing he does is gallop, kick, buck, canter, trot round, yeah? as he plays with his mates. Well, and he's got a rug on his back, you know, which is the same weight as a bit of harness, or the type of harness that this pony's wearing here. Similar sort of weight with all the buckles and the weight of the material. Not a great deal of difference between the two in weight. So, therefore, he's going around with that, you know, so, there's nothing wrong with cantering them, right, or we shall canter this horse, I wouldn't say it's a thing you want to do all the time, obviously, because you're sending a shock up through their legs. But every horse that we drive always has a bit of a canter. You know, a few hundred yards, and then if they ever do get into a canter for whatever reason, they're not going to run off in blind fear. Because the thing that was behind them when they were trotting was, was lovely, they was happy with that, they was in their comfort zone. As soon as you take them into a, a canter, it becomes a monster behind them chasing them in a, in a second and that's why you'll get horses some some of the cases horses run off it's because they've broken into a canter from a trot and thought oh my god that's chasing me now yeah and that is true you know definitely true um, and you can upset all very simply so you see this horse now want to break to a canter and that, I love that, because he's never done that in his life. And he's getting used to doing it. He's never done that in his life at this speed. Steady boy, steady my dog. There's a good lad. And he's just seeing that he can do it now. You'd have to understand trotting horses, perhaps, to understand what I'm saying. But they wouldn't canter. Normally, when they've, they're at the, their limit of the speed they can do, they'll break to a canter and then they're disqualified, they have to pull out, come behind the others in a race, in a proper organised race I'm talking about. In Holland and Germany and France, it's quite a very well organised sport. And uh, you can go there and watch, in America especially, um, trotting racing is, is, I would say, near as big as, you know, riding horse racing, you know what I mean? Um, jockey racing. And he's very, very, very well organised. He's not done. As you sometimes see it over here, helping up the road with two horses and, a, you know, things you see on YouTube, he's very, very well organised and run under strict rules. So this horse now is coming to himself no end. He's, he's, you know, I'm really pleased to be able to get him. If I can get him to go nice and sensible and forget about his past, which is a very big thing for us to do. And if he doesn't forget about his past, at least accept his future. If we can get him to do that, just with a gentle hand on the rein, then we're obviously marching on and we're, you know, we're getting it right. So that's what we're hoping to do anyway. You know, we use a rubber bit. People say, you're crazy, Barry. How can you possibly stop that horse? Well, let me tell you, you ain't going to stop him in a Liverpool on the last slot. Definitely not. Look at runaway horses. You see a man there doing all his might, standing up and pulling as hard as he possibly can. He stopped the horse. Whether it's a Shetland Pony Shire, Brace Horse, Gelderlander, Freak, whatever you like. He ain't going to stop him. Please believe me. He can pull as hard as he like. He ain't going to stop that horse. But if I can do it off the voice, right, 
I'll get the horse to listen to me and trust me, like we are here, I'm not saying it didn't go, you, I don't think you'd find many people, I'm not playing my own trumpet at all, but you wouldn't find many people to put a trotter in a rubber bit and drive him. <laughs> they wouldn't be, they'd be, they've got all sorts of devices they put in to hold them, very thin bits, yeah? Over checks, so you've got the pressure on the top of the mouth and the bottom of the mouth. One is being pulled back, one's being pulled up. There's, you know, a lot. <laughs> There's quite a bit to it. So if we can steady, baby, just walk now, darling. Just walk. We walk up to our old post office and shop here, and um, let him know that he can just walk and stroll about. The world's a wonderful place. He ain't got to go mad or crackers. But for a fortnight, to change him to a little driving pony, or a, a driving horse, I don't know how tall he is, this one. Whoa, whoa, whoa stand still, my boat. You're a good boy. All right. Oh, he's just standing sweet there now. And Miller get down and just show you his bit before she goes and gets her shopping. Oh, baby. Very good Trigger. <laughs> so you can see how slack Baz has got the reins there and not, you know, he's not um, not holding on to his head at all. And you can also see when he's got his head down there, and you see the slackness in the side reins, there's no pressure on them. So what we're doing, we're not tying his head back, it's very important to realise that. See this elastic we've got here, just a loop of elastic, you know, how soft and stretchy it is. You can see that through the reins, but see it's very soft and stretchy. I can pull it between my two fingers and stretch it out. Look, so it's really nice and soft. And when he's got his head down here, he's not being restricted by the reins. And he's also, when he puts it out there, see it just coming into play when he lifts his nose a bit. But when he puts his head down here, there's no weight on them. He's not, he's not being held back. It just gives him a little bit of guidance. And that means that when he's going along, we don't have to keep, because the reins and not a consistent pressure and we don't want to be pulling on his head either we don't want to be hanging on to his mouth it's better that he learns it himself and he can go along test the pressure out and it's always in a consistent place so you see there the side reins going slack again when he's got his head he you can't ever tie a horse back to get his head in the right position you can't ever do that because he'll just learn to lean against it but what you can do is give him a little bit of guidance a little bit of consistent guidance with the side reins which then means that you're only really communicating with him off his head um, with the reins when you want him to steer. And then gradually over time what will happen, he'll get used to holding his head like that. He'll get used to being, you know, comfortable in that position. And then gradually what we'll do is take the side reins off and he'll keep his head like that. Um, obviously just off the reins but on a very loose rein contact. So we won't need to have a load of contact with him on our reins to get his head in that position, he'll find it naturally comfortable to go like that. And that's what we're trying to do, which is especially important with them, um, you know, when you're reschooling horses like this. <laughs> um, it's especially important to remember, um, you know, because what we don't want to be doing is putting more severe bits in his mouth to hold his head in, because um, he'll just fight against it, you know, and he's, he's got to learn that it's more comfortable. There's no pressure on it when he holds his head in a nice position. It's a nice soft bit of rubber. You can see he's got a bit of foam around his lips there where he's chewing it um, and that's lovely, his neck's nice and relaxed um, I mean he already works from the back end, I know people say oh well you shouldn't worry about his head carriage, he's got to come through from behind but this horse already does that, his, his quarters are powerful, obviously that's what he does, he, he can throw his he can over track so much with his hind feet that they come right forward past his knees so that's not the issue with him but when he sticks his nose up like that and leans against your hands which is what he's been taught to do um, you know, you've got no control over him because he'll just pull against your hand. So we're trying to re-educate him to hold his head in a nice position, um, you know, where he comes off your hands. So he's easy to drive um, for the lady who owns him. You can see he's been standing here now for um, about five or ten minutes. I've been moving around him, just talking about him and gone in and got my shopping and he's not moved. Um, so, you know, he's, he's learning the job. He's uh, going to go and stand, stand in front of him now and... Um, stand in front of him and then walk away from him. Just make a fuss of him so he knows that you know I'm a nice person. I've given him a scratch and and I walk away from him and obviously he'll want to follow me. 
you can see there the reins are still slack and he's still standing still when he's been asked to which is exactly what you want and you know what you want a pony to do see the reins how slack they are just standing there because he's been asked to